Amazon AWS and its RDS databases and database instances are pretty cool technology. I'm very excited about the concepts of platform as a service, and I think it's one of the more interesting aspects of cloud and cloud data management. So I really enjoy talking about it and getting engaged. And it's not hard to get started. If you're just exploring the space, just getting going, it's actually really easy. But as with anything that's really easy, there's probably aspects of it that aren't as easy as I would think or as you would think. So let's walk through this together and create our new RDS SQL Server instance. So first we're going to start with Create Database right down here and we're going to click on Create Database. Now it's going to listen up here and they've, they're working on these new mechanisms and stuff but we're not worry about that. We're going to use their new mechanism and take advantage of it. We're going to click on Easy Create to get going because that just makes it simpler. It's going to take away a lot of the settings and a lot of worries. We're going to pick SQL Server. And now you can pick a dev test instance or a production instance. That's all on you how you want to set that up. For my example, and I would recommend if you're just learning, start with the free tier. Avoid issues. So next we just have to scroll down and we're going to find our DB instance identifier. We have to give it a name. And it could be anything. In this case, for my example, within my own little Amazon setting here, I'm just going to say test instance. We can put it to whatever we want. You're also going to have to have a login name. Now this is a SQL login. There's nothing special about it, but you do have to supply one. On the other hand, I don't like admin. I'm going to put in a der derivation of my name, not grant because it's a, uh, if we put in grant, it has a problem with it uh, because that's a reserve word. So I'm going to put in granted and it gets us through the, the gate. Now you can let it auto-generate a password for you, or I'm going to supply my own. You do have to type it correctly twice. And that's it. Now I could click Create Database right now and it will go and create this new SQL Server instance for me. But I'm going to pause here one second and go back up and show you all the stuff that we skipped over. We, these are all the default settings. They, these, if you wanted to, it's got the ability to go back and do a standard create if you're interested in it. But otherwise, it does this and it sets up all of these things for you by default for a test instance, for a I'm learning type of situation. All of this is pretty cool. There's one thing we would want to change and that's right here where it says publicly accessible. We will want to change this after we create the database. So next, we're going to click Create Database. At this point, it goes back to the screen where my other instances are. And so you can already see I've got one instance here, Hamshack Radio. And now we're creating our test instance. And you can even see over on the right that it is creating. And this will take a few minutes to complete. So now's a great time to get a cup of coffee. After the instance is finished being created, you're ready to go. You can go in here and start managing it, but you won't be able to access this from outside of AWS unless you make a modification to it. So let's go and set, go ahead and make that modification. Now we open up the instance and we're going to go to modify. Once we're here, we're going to go down and make one change. We're going to make this instance publicly accessible. Now you wouldn't want to do this for a production server necessarily unless you've got some good strong security built around it. And by default, all the AWS RDS um, servers and databases have security built around them. They have a firewall in place. But by exposing it to the internet, you are taking a small risk. But because this is a dev test instance, I'm taking no risk at all, so I'm going to make that one little change and nothing else for the moment. And all I have to do is come down here and click continue. Now it's going to show me the change that I made, publicly accessible, change from no to yes. And it's going to say it's going to do it the next maintenance window, which would be on Monday from you know wherever point we're at right now. Instead, I'm going to click apply immediately. Now it will cause downtime, but that's okay. This is you know a brand spanking new instance. It's for development. It's not a problem at all. I'm going to click Modify Instance. And so now it's going to modify that instance. And that will take a couple of minutes, so you won't see it come back up immediately. 
And that's okay. Again, we're, we're talking dev, we're just getting set up. Now, we have to do one more thing. We need to go in here and modify the security settings. Now we've got the security groups. I've just got the very simple default set up. We'll go ahead and select that. And you can see that we're going to have it clears it down to our set of groups and we're going to select it again because what we need to do is we need to modify the rules. Now, if my rules are already modified because I'm using the one security group for all my different instances currently for development. Not necessarily a thing you'd want to do in production. But for my development instances, I'm all set up that way. And I need to edit the inbound rules. Now, I've already got the rule set up. But I'm going to show you how to add it. You would click Add Rule, and then you've got a drop-down list. And it's all the different methods you could do to customize the rule. And there's all kinds of different ones. Because we're setting up SQL Server, we're going to focus right here on MSSQL. Now, it's going to go for the port range. And then we need to decide, are we letting everyone in? some custom IP range, or we click My IP, and it knows that the IP I'm connected with right now to the internet, to the console, is this IP address. And I can click Save Rules, and it will then save it. I'm not going to save it because it's identical to a rule I already have, so it would actually cause a problem. But that's it. Once I've got the rule in place, once it's finished modifying my database, and we'll go back to the database, My database is now publicly accessible. It says it's available. It should be all good. What I've got over here on the left is a test instance string. So if we take that string and copy it, and then open up Management Studio or anything else, We can go in here and supply that string to our server name, use the login name and password that we created, and it should, using the default port 1433, connect up just fine, as it did. And so now you see we've got an instance of SQL Server under management. Now it is an RDS instance, therefore there are some differences in the mechanisms that it has available to us. But overall, we're still looking at a database. So if we were to, you know, I mean, a, 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 an instance of SQL Server. So if we were to go in here and say create a database, let's make sure we're connected for the right one. There we go. We can go back over here and hit F5 and refresh, and sure enough, the Hamshack Radio database has been created. And if we wanted to, we could, you know, use Hamshack Radio and then create tables. And the results come back. The command was completed successfully. If we now go over and look at the Hamshack Radio database, or server, sorry, uh, I mean, no, no, in this case, database, apologies. we can see the tables that we just created. And so you can see the tables I created are there, and this is all just another SQL Server instance at this point, mostly. There are details that are different, but overall, we are just looking at SQL Server, and we can start doing all the things that we would do inside SQL Server. That's it. For the moment, we will be talking more about AWS, AWS RDS, AWS DevOps, and a whole lot more. Keep an eye on this channel. We got a lot more stuff coming. Thank you. My name is Grant Fritchie. I work for Redgate Software.